you missed some excitement in here. Uh, my Hyper-V popped up an alert telling me that it wanted to restart and didn't give me the option to postpone. So we're uh, in the middle of applying an update, almost done. Uh, in the meantime, I got a couple of questions during the break that I thought um, really kind of uh, I neglected to answer publicly. So I, I should get these answers out to everybody rather than just a couple people. Uh, so first of all, what kind of data sources can PowerPivot consume? Uh, I've shown Access and I've shown Excel. Um, and you know, basically Access is a stand-in for really any database uh, that has a, a, a decent driver to it. We have a, a long list of uh, databases we can connect to as long as uh, the driver is available to us. We don't install really any drivers other than the native SQL drivers, but we can certainly talk to more than just uh, SQL Server and Access. Uh, we can connect to text files, uh, sort of a, um, a minimum. And then the most exciting thing is this thing we call data feeds. And data feeds are meant to be the catch-all for lots of data sources that we couldn't possibly anticipate. And data feeds is really just, if you're, if you're familiar with um, Atom feeds, sort of like RSS, but for data, um, Atom feeds are what we consume. There's a very simple uh, row-oriented row schema syntax that we consume in XML. And anything that produces that shape of data and we can reach with a URL, we can consume as a data source. Uh, so it means two things. Number one, um, custom, relatively simple custom adapters can be written uh, to various backends. And then number two is that two different technologies uh, within Microsoft have already adopted it, at least two. I think there are a couple more. But the two most important ones are that every SharePoint list in 2010 is exposed as a data feed. There's even a button in the SharePoint ribbon that lets you connect to that list as a data source, and that goes back into PowerPivot, and it's refreshable. So any SharePoint list is now a valid data source. Uh, and every reporting services report is also now exposed as one or more uh, data feeds. If it's a multi-table report, you'll see all three. You can sort of pick and choose which of them that you want. Uh, and there's also some, some amount of parameterization. You can certainly construct data feeds that respect, like if user applied filters to get to a particular place in the UI, well, that can be reflected in the URL that you hand back to PowerPivot. Those filters could be on there if you, if you want. Um, so data feeds, definitely worth looking at. There are some blog posts on the official uh, PowerPivot blog on MSDN that explain the data feed syntax and how to, how to write one. Um, but it's also fun to play with the, you know, the built-in reporting services and SharePoint stuff. The other question was uh, about file size. And you know, we talked about this a little bit before, but I thought we'd uh, covered a little bit more depth. So um, PowerPivot compresses, it's a, it's a column-oriented database, not a row-oriented database, which is what enables so much compression. Um, if you think about the amount of duplication in a column, it's obviously pretty high, and duplication across rows is not. So being column-oriented in RAM, opens up the possibility of compression. Uh, and there's quite a few nifty tricks that Amir Nats dreamed up. Um, he's our architect. And uh, that sort of, I don't know, he, he, like every few weeks it seemed like he was squeezing more air out of the database. Um, anyway, so the, the factors that affect this are, there's a two gigabyte limit on SharePoint file size. Um, now that I think about it, I seem to recall seeing an email thread that it might limit to one gigabyte. Um, I'll have to go double check that. Um, but it's either one or two. It's a huge difference, obviously. But, um, and, uh, but then think about it in terms of roughly how the algorithm works. Uh, the number of columns that you add is, in many ways, most ways, more significant than, num than the number of rows. Uh, because um, each column that we add, we're actually able to compress that one less than the previous column. Uh, and the contents of those columns are you know, the unique values of those columns are sort of the, the largest uh, space consumer within the database. So the advice I was giving was to, and it's not, it's not a fixed compression ratio. It definitely depends upon your data. If you've got certain data sets compress a lot better than others. Um, and if you're, if you're hitting the limit, the, the two best tricks are to throw out unneeded columns. They're columns that you sort of just grab because it was convenient to grab them all, uh, filter down your number of columns, 
and especially try to filter out uh, columns that contain large, unique text values. So you get paragraphs of text in there, probably not all that useful in your OLAP solution. Uh, Power Pivot does not support drill through, so you know, at least not in V1, so you're never gonna get much use out of that except maybe word count. Um, and uh, yeah, so um, that's sort of, that's the advice. There are other uh, articles uh, as you can get to off of the Power Pivot fact that give you even more detail about how to sort of control and influence uh, the file size of, of these databases. But, but there is no precise formula uh, or compression ratio. It's all variable. Wow, we're still applying computer settings. Okay, so but I know what I was gonna talk about next, um, which is why SharePoint? And uh, so I've shown you Power Pivot on the client, and that's the user design environment for building these cubes and building reports. Uh, it really is the, the thing that you should start with when you're understanding Power Pivot, but um, if it was just that, we never would have built it um, for several reasons. One of them being that the, uh, the client environment is free. <laughs> um, but uh, the SharePoint, there's several different purposes to it, but um, we, we mean SharePoint to be the place where you where you actually publish and share reports. Now, as an Excel user, and I've talked to so many of these Excel users over the years that are basically like shadow IT, uh, building reports for their work groups, they have a lot of problems that really closely resemble uh, the problems that the IT department has. So I'm the, I'm the spreadsheet author. I don't actually get much of a voice <laughs> uh, at the table uh, when it comes to negotiating what the business unit is going to do with respect to databases and things like that. But if I did, I would say things like, I hate the version control problem on my spreadsheets. The same thing that everyone hates about Excel, I also uh, struggle with. And that is, you know, I put my work out there and I don't know where it goes. It, because I share it, the vehicle that I share it with is a file. Uh, I have no control over its destination. I have no control over what happens to it. People can modify it and make mistakes with it. All these sorts of things that you hear, I, I feel those problems as well. When I fix a bug or I produce a new version of my spreadsheet report, I don't really have a good way to make sure that everyone's using that version. How do I make sure that you're not using the one saved to your hard drive? And if I publish it to SharePoint, regular SharePoint without Power Pivot, people just have to go download it anyway. It's really not much better than emailing. I mean, it gives me places to go to get the newest, I suppose, but I can't, there's no push to it. It's only, it's still only pull and modify. Um, so, the whole point from the Excel user's point of view is to give me a place and a means. I can publish my report and let my audience consume it. But um, because Excel services, Excel services is sort of like, it is the server version of Excel, and it renders to HTML. It calculates and renders to HTML. So uh, you don't, the consumers don't even have to have Excel. So I can publish it, say here's my report, uh, you guys can consume it, you can interact with it, you can change slicers, all that kind of stuff, drill down, all those kinds of things, with, interact with the report, uh, but you cannot download the workbook. It only exists in HTML in your browser. Um, so it gives me great version control. You know, I, when I publish a new one, next time you hit the site, you get it. There's, you don't, you're always going back there. So I made the point on my, my blog that really the problem with Excel is not so much with Excel, it's with it's with Excel files. Uh, and we were sort of taking the file metaphor out of it and replacing it with URL. That's the sharing mechanism. It's not a download. Now, um, that brings a lot of other benefits to me as well, such as I can schedule automatic refresh. Now, all those data sources that I pulled from to create my report, when I publish it to the server, I can set up a scheduled refresh time, you know, once a night or whatever that goes and, and the Power Pivot engine goes and pulls all the latest data from all those data sources, rebuilds the workbook, reruns all the calculated columns, uh, and then refreshes the Excel report and puts that back in SharePoint. So the, the, the XLSX file goes back into SharePoint with the latest data in it. And you know, the next morning people hit that report, they get, the, they get the newest data. So I don't have to spend my time just sort of turning the crank on reports that I've built before, um, I, can, I can go on and build other reports, I suppose. Now, from the IT standpoint, or even just from the database pro standpoint, uh, 
you know, the things that I like to point out are that um, one of the biggest problems with Excel apps today is that people don't know that they exist. And people who are using them know about them, but they're all out there on hundreds of desktops and laptops sort of lurking under the radar, and you never hear about them until one of them breaks. Uh, and oftentimes it breaks because people don't know about it, like you know, change the name of a database or something like that, and now a mission critical app that you had no idea existed uh, is now broken. Well, <clears throat> with the usage of important applications, Excel applications, concentrated on servers rather than on desktops, you have much fewer points of contact where you, you can go and see what's in use. And PowerPivot offers um, a usage dashboard that tells you what workbooks are being used, how often, by who, whom, um, and allows you to say, okay, I, you can even look inside the workbook at that point and see, okay, these are the data sources that it uses, uh, and maybe there's a better way to be doing this. So you can, you can have a much more proactive stance towards problems than just sort of sitting around waiting for them to happen, which they invariably do. This is a one heck of an update it's applying. Okay, so um, what I'm gonna do now, when, when it eventually comes back up, is show you those features I just mentioned. I'm gonna show you uh, publishing to SharePoint. I'm gonna show you the report gallery, which is um, the way that your report consumers can view thumbnails of the reports. Um, and show you the usage dashboard. And that's basically it for the demo. So if we wanted to field some more questions now while we wait, a variable amount of time, be happy to do that. Yes? What about user rights? Because if you put an XLS file on, on HTML, it will be visible to third parties, right? You have no means of putting rights in Excel. Uh, so the question is, what about user rights? And um, so when you're rendering to HTML, you don't really have any control over it. Um, well, let me take a, sh take a stab at that. I might be not quite answering exactly your question, in which case, set me straight. But um, you have SharePoint control over the file. Um, and I can, I can restrict who can see it. Uh, so you know, I can allow you to see it in the browser, um, but not me. Um, and yeah, you've got a snapshot in HTML at that point, you know, whatever your filters are set to and everything, you've got a snapshot at that point in time and you could screenshot it or save it as HTML. Um, but you know, the HTML file that you're saving is very small. It doesn't contain any data other than exactly what you see on the screen. It doesn't contain the, the source data, obviously. So um, it's not terribly different from anything else, you know, any report that can be screenshotted unless you've got some sort of um, or DRM in place that prevents people from saving it as HTML or I mean any HTML based reporting tool will have this problem. Did I, did I understand your question correctly or did I miss it? What I thought about was in, in analysis services you can provide for a specific region. Oh right, right. So one user can only see So what we don't have is dimension security. We don't have the ability, to, we don't have granular security. The, the, the security level stops at the file. We, we don't have anything other than file level security in, uh, in PowerPivot v1. That was the only question. Any question about Windows Hyper-V? <laughs> oh, the story with Bill Gates, yes. Um, so uh, we went to this demo with Bill. It was my first and only time uh, in front of Bill and we had a, a new build of, uh, of Excel, and I didn't know it, but exactly the day before, we'd introduced a performance bug into that build. And uh, so he asked a question, and uh, I misunderstood the question. I thought he asked a different question than he asked, so I gave the wrong answer. And in the meantime, one of my coworkers said, okay, let's just show you, and he clicks the button on the app on Excel, and like for two minutes, we're looking at an hourglass, as if that's bad enough. And during that two minutes, uh, the misunderstanding between Bill and I was allowed to stand because there was no evidence, there was nothing to really trigger us to realize we misunderstood each other. Uh, and given what he asked in my answer, I mean, I would have been upset in his shoes too. It was a really bad answer to his question. <laughs> and uh, so he, he just 
you know, basically uh, yelled at us uh, for the next, you know, the next full minute, um, made sure that, that uh, his displeasure was fully known, and we, we got the message. Um, but th that's not the funny part. The funny part is what happened when it eventually finished, and he looks up at the screen and he sees the result he didn't expect. He sees the right result instead of the wrong <laughs> result. <laughs> and he goes, oh, oh, well, that, that's, that's good. That, I'm amending what I said before. <laughs> Not like, oh, a misunderstanding, I'm sorry, or whatever, but I'm amend, like, it was so weird to hear the, st the stream of, of what he said before, right up against, I'm amending what I said before. <laughs> He's like, goes from like, uh, working on the docks to royalty <laughs> in, in about a split second. But a very, very interesting guy with an incredible recall. I couldn't believe how many things he remembered. I don't know that we're going to survive this, this applying computer settings. No, so um, maybe you could show something from your uh, blog or... Uh... Oh, that's a good point. Yeah. So maybe we could get another uh, PC up and running. Well, I mean, if someone else has a build, I mean, I, I, this is the only we, build I brought. Uh, we have a build, actually. So uh, 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 you do this one, and, and we we'll see if we can um, get one up in, in, in five, so as an okay. alternative. So, um, yeah. Okay, so this is uh, a site that I created. Um, it actually uses SharePoint. I pay $8 a month for this site to run. Um, and it has a collection of questions from the Power Pivot community. There actually is a Power Pivot community already. Um, and a lot of the questions, not all of them, but a lot of the questions that came up today have some, at least some semblance of an answer here. So um, we have uh, already uh, over 100 questions and answers. Um, I'm going to be doing a little bit of filtering. I think we could probably use about 15 less questions than we've got right now. But um, it's not just me maintaining this site. Uh, this is the list of all the people who are contributing, uh, recruited people via the blog, basically. And uh, so it's a mixture of Microsoft and non-Microsoft. This is Mr. Excel. Um, he happens to live 30 miles from me now. Um, and uh, this guy, Tiago, he is translating uh, he and one other guy are translating every item in the FAC into Portuguese. So we've got a, we have, we have a Portuguese view of our FAC, believe it or not. Um, and if there's any other languages that people would like to be volunteered, you want to volunteer to translate, here you go. Um, so there's the, there's the question in Portuguese. You click through and you get the answer in Portuguese. <laughs> um, it's pretty neat. I just, every time someone wants to add another language, I just add two columns and off we go. Um, that's the Power Pivot FAC, and you've probably all seen uh, Power Pivot Pro. And uh, it's got the uh, somewhat amusing picture of Donald Farmer on it right now, um, where it looks like he's not wearing any clothes. Um, and then the things like, uh, um, let's see here, there's Categories, so um, the Great Football Project, so everything that I've done uh, in this demo and a lot more. Um, you're actually, the things I showed today go slightly beyond, that's, you know, you've basically seen a preview of my next blog post on, uh, on cube formulas. I still haven't explained how that sorting thing works. But uh, this is all of the football project all the way back to loading the data and cleaning the data. Um, and uh, let's check over here real quick. Oh. That's about as good as having your hard drive just die. Uh, and then I mentioned as well that there's a um, uh, sample workbook here, temperature mashup. And you can get the data. I'll have to dig that link out. Um, oh, another thing was. Um, How many people have seen the uh, SharePoint Samurai? OK, you don't count, Jocelyn. Um, that actually might, well, no, let's not do that. We're getting another PC with PowerPivot, the new build 
development. Okay. So we would have that uh, within 10 minutes. So you're the, uh, here's someone, one of my friends is using Power Pivot to <clears throat> discover which indices in his, or I guess it's indexes, not indices, which indexes in his uh, SQL database have been updated uh, a bajillion times and never used. Um, so he was using this to clean up performance in his, his work in his uh, database. And then, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah, one question that we got during the, the break was you know, really how, so if people want to get started with this, just what do they need to do and you know, what is the process of yeah. So that could be a good way when, until we get that machine up. And sure. Um, well, one easy thing to do is just go to this site, Power Pivot Pro, and click on the Power Pivot beta here. Um, you'll see that uh, just got a collection of links and sort of short instructions on how to, how to get rolling. Um, it's all publicly available. You don't need to be uh, on any betas or any sort of private betas at this point. Um, this is the November CTP and the November beta of Office. Um, oh, here we go. Here's the uh, good place to go. Here's where the uh, temperature mashup uh, workbook is. Um, so here's Excel. You've got to get Excel, and then you've got to get um, uh, Power Pivot for Excel. That's the add-in that I've been using to design uh, the cubes and reports in. Um, and then if you want SharePoint, uh, so like I said, the client install is very straightforward. The SharePoint install, it's still, it's our, our first ever install of Power Pivot or AS with SharePoint. So um, it is a little bit tricky. Um, it it can, absolutely can be done if you follow the instructions. If you don't follow the instructions, it won't work. Um, and some of the, there are a couple of steps that are you might not believe you need to do, but you do. So, um, and there are people here who have uh, put up their tutorials on how um, how best to set up SharePoint with Power Pivot. So don't don't just sit down and start running setup. Definitely follow the, these instructions here.